Greetings, and welcome to the Neuroscience of Improvisation. How accidental our, our existences are, really, and how full of influence by circumstance. to go to East Africa, but as fate or karma or accident or whatever the conditions may be happened, they sent me to Thailand. Our guest for this episode is Dr. Suresh Vaidyanathan. He is widely recognized as Gautam Suresh. He's an extraordinary Carnatic Indian classical percussionist renowned for his mastery of the ancient Gautam, a clay pot with distinctive, resonant, and percussive qualities. This instrument plays a pivotal role in Carnatic music, both as accompaniment and soloist, with a global presence as a leader and collaborator with world-class musicians, Dr. Vaidyanathan brings a unique perspective to the intersection of improvisation and musical expertise. Beyond his exceptional musical talents, Gautam Suresh is a remarkable teacher known for his creativity and generosity as an exponent of rhythmic knowledge. He is also a scholar and recently completed his doctoral studies on the history of the Gautam and its performance traditions. In this first installment of our enlightening conversation, Dr. Vaidyanathan imparts invaluable insights into the development of musical expertise through the art of improvisation. He shares how his intellectual pursuits have enriched his musicianship, and he unveils his secrets to maintaining and nurturing the quality of mind required to excel in the world of music and the responsibility that musicians hold to both themselves and their audience. Join us as we delve into the fascinating world of Dr. Gautam Suresh Vaidyanathan, a musician, scholar, and delightful human being. It's just absolutely amazing to have you here to talk with you and learn from you about your experience and, and also your background in Carnatic music. Can you just uh, say a little bit about your background and just who you are and how you describe yourself these days? Yeah. Um, I come from a music loving uh, family background. Uh, my uh, maternal grandparents were, uh, you know, good musicians, but not performing uh, in public. So they, initiated every child that is born in the family into music. Uh, this is, I mean, uh, they wanted them to be singing. Uh, you know, there are many occasions in the family where the children, as they grow, they're being put into uh, demonstrate, demonstrating their musical skills. Um, so also it is being treat, uh, considered as a custom and ritual uh, to have the children be taught some uh, music. Uh, because in future they might, you know, uh, find a, a, a relaxation or a de-stressing thing uh, with music. So music was not intended to be a profession, uh, families like ours, but it happened. So me and my elder brother uh, were put into learning a percussion instrument from uh, a teacher who was a friend of my grandfather, because my grandfather, uh, realize that we show more interest in percussion or, I mean, kind of meeting on whatever uh, utensil or a table or a uh, chair you that comes by, you know. Uh, so, um, whichever that is handy, we were trying to express our skills. Uh, so, uh, we were put into this teacher and as we were learning, uh, we started showing more interest in perfecting the art or probably to outdo the co-students. You know, that was That is how the interest starts. In fact, um, uh, the, to the topic is improvisation. 
So improvisation is also um, um, a way of expressing your one-upness uh, in comparison with your uh, uh, co-students, basically. You don't even study the rules properly, but still, even ahead of that, even before that, you are uh, into comparing and competing. So, um, so that level, you know, establishes or assures that uh, you are going to go further exploring music. Then there was uh, Viku Vinayakram, who was the son of my first teacher, uh, Hariyar Sharma, uh, who was busy with the Shakti uh, band. And in every break of the tour, he would come back and you know supervise the students. On one such occasion, he found me to be worthy enough to be taught Gatam technique, because I was um, trying my hands on the Gatam as well. Then he asked me to attend uh, special classes early in the mornings. Um, then would teach me the proper fingering technique of Gatam. Again, that is the stage where he would properly guide me into a stage by stage, you know, exploration and improvisation. That's, this is how he first introduced the word to me. You know, you cannot be static. You need to uh, be dynamic. So to show dynamism, you should do always, a, I mean, make a statement and improve on it, improve on it, go on improving on it. And then, so that was a discipline taught basically. You need to do this. And uh, since the teacher tells you whether uh, it, it is natural or uh, a thrust upon idea, you work on it more and more. So that is how we uh, the next stage comes. Then uh, Vikuji became uh, more uh, uh, busy. And then I had to be sent to another teacher. Uh, my father took me to uh, the living legend, Dr. TV Gopalakrishnan, uh, who uh, is an expert in Mridangam, uh, South Indian percussion, and many music instruments, vocal, Hindustani and Carnatic, uh, uh, um, multifaceted genius. So this man found me worthy enough to be taught um, or be put into another uh, galaxy of music where you become uh, a creative musician. You are able to compose. You are able to arrange and organize and lead an ensemble. And also to uh, aesthetically appreciate the lyrical part of uh, the music or the melodic part of music. Because as percussion students, you know, you're not into learning more of um, the melody side of music. Say, for example, the raga or uh, the raga scales or how uh, they, they, they get improved, how, how they get developed, how, how you present them. Um, at the most, you all only get to learn how to accompany songs. Songs are, you know, restricted uh, lyrical words uh, based on a particular raga. Uh, but you need to learn that. You need to go with the song. You cannot do as a parallel track. You have to embellish. And for that reason, you need to learn the song kind of, you know, by, by experience. By It's not being, it's not taught uh, on a systematic manner, but um, the teacher always refers to the song. You have to do this at this point and don't do this in the other song kind of guidance. So that was the next stage. Then for, for a long period, I was with TV Gopal and Sir, um, learning the process of composing and, and um, creating opera kind of music, uh, allotting sections to many other uh, co-artists. So this is the next level of learning. So as I was growing up, I was also being put into a company, uh, some of the greatest percussion players and uh, vocalists and instrumental players. Um, some of the names I had uh, played with are Dr. S. Balachandar, the Veena Vichuzu, Lalgudi Jaira, M.S. Gopalakrishnan, all are internationally acclaimed uh, Canadian musicians. And um, on the vocal also, I had been playing right from the dawn of Canadian music, Samangudi Sinvasaya, uh, who would have been around 15, 20 years now, um, if he's alive. So that is that kind of age difference was there, but still as a young boy, I was put into a company, uh, most of the musicians. So it's like every concert is an experience and you play with a big vocal musician or an instrumentalist, both are entirely different in approach. You know, you, in, though both of them uh, present a lot of lyrical compositions because Carnatic music is based upon, uh, you know, lyrical compositions in a, large number but approaching i mean or accompanying a vocal music is different from 
um, instrumental music. All these skills, you know, you uh, get to learn as you grow, as you perform every concert. And every concert is a teaching platform, learning platform for you. So this is how I started. And almost about um, four decades have gone by uh, since I started performing on stage. And I was also good in academics. I was um, after schooling, I went to college, did my bachelor's degree in commerce and masters. And then about 10, 15 years back, someone suggested there's a rhythmology uh, course that is uh, introduced in University of Madras, where uh, it, you can do a get a master's degree on that. So I joined that course well after establishing as a, a professional musician, but still I treated myself as a student and uh, attended the classes, then uh, went into the library, exploring books, things like that, uh, doing projects. And that is when probably the, uh, you know, the, the uh, it um, uh, dawned on my mind that I should go further deep into doing some research because I am being um, hailed as a very uh, complete, um, you know, percussionist and someone who has uh, gone deep into uh, the style, playing techniques and the uh, um, history of, uh, you know, maintaining some kind of convention and respectability, uh, I mean, carrying some respectability on the instrument. Uh, this is, um, I mean, uh, this is another part of analyzing my music. Let me first uh, complete this part. So um, the way the society is looking at me as a responsible percussionist, you know, uh, someone who can give a dignified presentation. I mean, these are all jargons, I would say, but still, uh, I mean, they, they uh, always attach this uh, um, adjectives to someone who is really, you know, uh, acceptable in the field. So at that point, I thought that let me uh, put my mind into, you know, to go further in research. And interestingly, I found that nobody has done it earlier. Uh, one reason is that there are a lot of, uh, you know, academic uh, requirements, basic uh, conditions, like you should be a master, uh, you should have a master's degree, you should be, uh, you know, musically connected. And there, is a, there are a lot of uh, uh, return work that is needed to be done. And you should, um, uh, I mean, you are expected to do some real research. That is the basic requirement. Uh, though some people skip it and you know they do they take uh, uh, you know other routes, but basically I am someone who is uh, who has who show a lot of interest in reading and trying to learn wherever there is a source and retain it and use it. Uh, it's not just music; anything connected with music, any information I normally collect and retain it, or you know try to uh, I and mean, put it together uh, to use in my works. From there, the journey further went into, you know, uh, referring a lot of books and collecting information about musicians of the past, especially those who played Ghatam about uh, three centuries back. And then um, how, I mean, what what have been the uh, uh, styles of performance? I mean, various approaches to music, how they procured Ghatam and how their instruments were made. And then, uh, interestingly, when you check the uh, the... Um, scriptures, the old uh, palm leaf uh, works, and whatever works, literary works that are that have a connection with music. Interestingly, there is a lot of information about uh, general music musicians and very less about guitar players. But when I explored further, uh, not not confining myself to guitar, I mean uh, for to, to Carnatic music or music, uh, guitar as a part. You know, it has a lot of uh, other uh, connections. It, it is a household uh, instrument. It is used in all the rituals, um, not just by the Indian community, but by the entire world. A clay pot has been a part and parcel of everybody's life system. Um, and then there have been philosophers in all uh, beliefs who have, uh, you know, taken this clay pot for referring, uh, I mean, for describing philosophical thoughts, so the uh, the mortality of man, man, or the immort and the immortality, immortality of the the soul, all these things, you know, like this, 
for every description or explanation, they have always taken the clay pot as uh, to, to show as an instant instance or, or an example. Um, so I uh, found that there's a lot of material in that approach as well and started collecting uh, information on that and made it a part of my research. Though it doesn't speak much about music, uh, but a clay pot um, also has, um, you know, a different face, unlike the other uh, music instruments. Uh, so the, all these things put together, I did my research. I started doing it in 2016 and it took about six years. Maybe I should, I should not have completed. I wanted to do a little more, but time constraints were there uh, imposed by the, uh, the education system. So I had to stop at a particular point and then put them together, uh, do my dissertation and then successfully have completed my uh, doctorate. But the day I said I should stop, uh, I realized that that was the day of beginning, actually. Uh, honestly, uh, there's so much more to you know learn about uh, the, the clay pot and how the clay pot has been made into different kinds of instruments. And now there are musicians, about, I mean, uh, living around me who do not play the gatam as a gatam, but as another instrument. They uh, mount uh, animals high on top and then convert it into a different instrument, but still it is a clay pot base. Uh, like this, there are uh, um, uh, numberless instruments available all over the all over India. And there are, of course, uh, instruments like Udu or other uh, clay uh, based instruments around the world. So the, the uh, exploration cannot stop. And uh, I just gave it a temporary break only. So I would like to explore more if God gives me the strength, uh, you know, life and then the uh, opportunity to do it. But in, in performance, yeah, to, to put everything in a nutshell, uh, all these 40 years of my journey in music, what I have realized is that I'm not here just to, uh, you know, uh, be another accompaniment in a concert as a fourth or fifth uh, percussion player. I go along with the music, uh, just grooving, and then, uh, you know, having fun with uh, co-musicians, get paid, go home, have a, you know, a very uh, um, happy life. And then that's it. I mean, put a full stop. Uh, somewhere during my journey, maybe about three decades back, I have, I have realized that I am a little different in my performance. I do not know how that realization came. But I have been performing, but in comparison, more aesthetically, I would call, but I cannot make that statement because it's someone else who has to say that. But I'm trying to restrict myself not to, uh, you know, bring in mediocrity and not to bring in, uh, I mean, at least spoil, uh, 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 being a spoiled sport in a, in a, um, in a very smooth, aesthetically developed uh, performance. So my role, I started redefining. Um, as a better accompaniment, I compare myself with somebody else who is intruding too much or is, who is uh, playing all the time, not to bother about spaces, not uh, giving time to take in the song or allow the other performer to come out with his ideas. See, these are all I, I, I have always been thinking that they, uh, you know, um, they are actually, uh, they do not allow a, a, an artist to grow further. The, the attitude the uh, uh, that sets in uh, an artist's mind. Either it is indifference or it is, uh, you know, um, high-headedness, um, too much of pride, or uh, uh, kind of all the time needing to have public attention, attention-seeking uh, attitude. So all these, you know, restrict a, a musician to open up or explore further internally. So it's internalizing, uh, that is what was, you know, I I, feel, I was feeling that uh, need to be uh, explored more, which I have started doing and my performance improved, definitely. Because I can see some uh, phenomenal musicians, you know, start respecting me, start, uh, may not be giving me more opportunities, but they always looked upon to me, my statements, my performance and uh, they, they underlined that this is uh, a class apart. This has happened, um, you know, all these, uh, all, all through these years. 
I thought that, well, if someone hails me to be a different uh, um, uh, concept or, uh, you know, of a higher, I mean, standing in a higher plane, I would like to retain that place first and then, if possible, to go further up in, in their expectation or in public opinion. Uh, that is probably the right recognition, you know, someone giving you an award or uh, giving you more opportunities, uh, you know, that can come or may not, may not be even, uh, you know, uh, striking at the right time, the right uh, proportion. But you are still, uh, you know, uh, given this uh, this uh, platform or an elevation, um, that, that gives you a lot of uh, self-esteem. Uh, so all these years I've been uh, doing that, getting a lot of students who uh, realize my value and uh, be disciplined to learn from me. That is another point. And my performances, I make sure that they have a mark of uh, uh, the most, uh, uh, I would not say sophisticated, but it has a class, it, it has uh, uh, an authority, a dignity and aesthetic sense and realizing the value of an audience. Amazing. Ah, oh, that's fantastic background and so wonderful to hear how you are approaching development even when you are so accomplished. And that really is the mark of the, the, the ultimate uh, potential of, of a, a musician or someone in any walk uh, of life or endeavor uh, always striving further and finding those next steps, uh, even when <laughs> you play in such a complete way, a way that is uh, so awe-inspiring already. So, uh, how? So, I'd be really curious to hear a little more about how you found that next gear, that next level for yourself. Uh, because it would be very easy just to say, like you said, you know, I'm doing very well. Look, lots of people love my playing. I, I don't, you know, my calendar is filled with, you know, opportunities to play. How did you uh, find that focus? And then what, can you talk a little bit more about uh, how you, you found a way to work on getting even better and, and kind of what that, that next, approach was for you that which is a creative leap forward yes um fortunately i was uh, as when i reached uh, when i started learning from my uh, uh, third guru the uh, dr tv gopalakrishnan uh, he has been uh, performing vocal music a lot so whenever he had uh, he performs he wanted me to accompany him on katam a small boy of like 13 14 years old but the other accompaniments would be uh, uh, someone who is in his 50s or, uh, you know, a little more. Uh, a very established, uh, celebrated uh, uh, Mridangam player or a violinist. Um, you know, so every concert, I'm here the smallest and the most inexperienced uh, uh, guy sitting. And just for the sake of being TV series uh, students, I'm there. But the rest of them are all, uh, you know, great musicians. But... That was the biggest opportunity I got because every concert, I was sitting next to these uh, giants, you know, li listening to them, listening to their live music. And it, they were uh, literally teaching me how to, uh, what is the best way of performing. Uh, they were giving me lessons indirectly by accompanying, to, accompanying my uh, teacher's music and performing a very grand solo. Things like, so in, initially they would not even turn towards my side and, uh, you know, do a nod or a smile. They, they would not care even to turn to my side. But I thought that maybe I, I should uh, equip myself more to turn their attention. I did not feel insulted. Um, so then on, I, I mean, simultaneously I was also attracted to the way they, you know, present their uh, compositions, their own creative ideas, the groovy, the... Uh, arithmetic uh, ideas and the way they give punches, they, they accent to their music and they connect with the audience and they sustain that energy and, you know, uh, suddenly uh, uh, grow up like, a, you know, 
big gene. Uh, so these are all, uh, you know, a big revelations to me. So I thought maybe I should work on this. So I start those days, there was not, uh, you know, you cannot record or uh, you don't have a reference of what's happened, what has happened earlier. So uh, suddenly you have to, you know, put all your uh, focus on these musicians' performance. And I thought maybe something similar to what they do, or at least I'll try to learn and repeat next concert. If he plays the same thing, I will give back by playing the same stuff immediately so that he is surprised. So the initial idea was to surprise them. And then I started uh, playing exactly what they were doing. And uh, for, for your information, the what played in, on the Mridangam cannot be exactly played on the Ghatam. Uh, you won't be able to produce the same effect. So I need to alter the fingering techniques, uh, I mean the, the concept, and then try to add a little more of my, uh, you know, facility on the instrument and show it. So first, this, they were surprised. Oh, oh my God, this guy, this boy is able to grasp and, you know, play back. But it was not instant. It, I had already been working on it uh, for a because not every other day you play with the same uh, great uh, percussion player. So uh, what I do was, what I've been doing was to learn this myself or I had a couple of, uh, you know, senior students of these machines. I would consult them very, I mean, genuinely. Uh, with all respect, I would learn this from them and then be ready uh, for the next opportunity. So it was a slow process, but I could, at, uh, at some point of time, I was able to impress upon them that I am here who can, you know, uh, reply to you in the, in the level you expect someone. So this was happening right after one percussionist after one, I mean, another. And uh, at one point, they started that they, they want to challenge me. So that is my success. When they thought from from a total uh, a ignorance or ignoring a state, state, I was uh, now being recognized. Now I am being challenged. So then the uh, I started uh, working on that as well again. So if they say three plus four is seven, I would say four plus three is seven, three is seven, or at least uh, one plus three plus uh, uh, four is seven. One plus two plus four is seven. Well, yeah. So it's one double of one and then double of two. So kind of th this kind of uh, concepts, um, when you reply in, uh, they're, uh, you know, uh, um, again, you challenge them back, kind of, not really, uh, but I try to do that. Then they come out with some more ideas. And then the, the best thing is that they start recommending you for more concerts. Till then, it was not, I mean, if you're there, okay, fine. And then they start recommending your name. So that's the next level of uh, um, um, your acceptance. And once the acceptance starts, more responsibility sets in. So from then on, I thought that, well, if I have to be accepted by these people, I have to stay there. Stay there in my thought process, in my uh, work, in my uh, compositions, in my rendering, in my brevity, in my, uh, you know, accenting and going in the same lights. There are a lot of things that make them happy. And there are a lot of things that make them unhappy as well. So I should avoid those uh, unhappy moments, definitely. If you're uh, too long, they don't like. If you play too, I mean, for, I mean, the same proportion of their time, they don't. I mean, um, there's too much of uh, uh, pride or selfishness that sets in the musician's mind once he's getting recognized. So he thinks that he, he should command the next person. Uh, I mean, in, incidentally, the ghatam is not the main percussion in a Canadian music concert. So you have to be um, submissive, not really submissive, but, you know, uh, restrictive in your playing and, uh, you know, wait for, especially when the Mridangam player is a senior. But that uh, rule has come to set in so uh, awkwardly <laughs> that even a, a junior Mridangam player would look upon someone like me. Well, I'm today, I do not want to share with you what I play. I will challenge you with the, uh, uh, with some complex idea. Let me see with all your experience, you are able to respond to me or you fumble kind of. And this attitude is there, uh, but I should be prepared for anything. If I'm really a professional one, um, I may charge whatever fees I want, but I should be, you know, performing 100% to my ability and my experience. Uh, so, Constantly, I have been put into tests. 
I have been put into um, you know challenges that were feeding into my mind, feeding into my brain, a lot more work. They were extracting from me a lot of work. I was, I, even today I keep enjoying them. The moment uh, somebody says that I have composed a new, uh, um, you know, syncopated music, would you like to, uh, I mean, I would like to perform this. I don't have to share with you when you, with your experience at all. You can directly, I mean, you, it's all, you know, cakes walk for you. I, I immediately would say, no, it's not like that. Please send me the music I've learned. I'll be prepared. It's not just learning I would do. I would be prepared with more of challenging back ideas, concepts to surprise him, not to uh, bother him, but to, to, you know, add my elements wherever that is possible and uh, tell him that, well, I am a little bit, uh, you know, experienced and uh, creative too. I, I appreciate your music at the same time. I do have some something to add up or add to it. So this, this is, Maybe, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if this is the only way a musician should grow. But to me, I find that this is the right way. More than, you know, doing a PR and um, trying to sell my music. Uh, I mean, spend more time in uh, communicating, uh, marketing my music. I have always been feeling that, well, I should uh, keep the stock ready. Once, I mean, there, there is a, a particular circle where they know that there's some worthy material that is available. This musician, this man can deliver some of the brilliant, uh, you know, performance or uh, ideas or the most, uh, you know, uh, um, I mean, how do you uh, describe satisfaction in music? I mean, you go and enjoy music. Okay. If you say enjoyment in music, that's not the right term, but I still call it. So someone comes to your concert and you make him feel very happy, elated or uh, you know, uh, um, he feels satisfied. Uh, you know, some some way you touch his his, his uh, soul or his mind uh, with your uh, superlative performance. So, once you get into that level, you want to. Uh, I mean, I feel that I should remain there. Once that is not possible, when, when, when I realize that that is not physically possible or my mind is not going into it or I become more and more due to some reason and, you know, this, it may be uh, contentedness or uh, you know, frustration, whatever it is. If I'm going to be pushed away from this state, I should stop playing. Keeping the purity, uh, keeping out mediocrity, as you put it is so core to your approach and and so important and the thing about that is uh, the to stay fresh is uh, the constant movement and you do that by constantly challenging yourself and the people you're with which is very inspiring so thank you for for sharing that i think that's so eye-opening uh, to hear that from the perspective of someone like yourself, uh, how you approach each and every concert, each and every opportunity as a growth opportunity. As a single, I mean, simple statement, I would say, it's the people who, around me who, uh, you know, made sure that I grew up. It's not their intention, but uh, indirectly, they made me, uh, you know, grow uh, into, into a better musician by setting standards. Now you are playing that role in so many uh, young musicians, well, musicians of all ages uh, that come to you to learn uh, and you are helping them to raise their level and find the path to the next step uh, in their progression. The legacy continues of your teachers through your teaching of your pupils.